Good morning. So today we're going to do part one of our rock cycle experiment. And to do this, we're going to need plastic knife. We're going to use crayons. We'll need uh, candles. These are tea candles. Uh, it'd be handy to have some of these to hold the tin foil. And something to start this with. Of course, you need to do this with your parents. So you have parental parents nearby. We're going to be using flames and knives. In class, we use these, uh, these little plastic knives. So what you're going to want to do is you'll be scraping these with the plastic knives. So the first thing we're doing in the Rock Cycle Lab, we're going to focus on the lesson. And the enduring understanding is that matter is never destroyed. It only changes form in a never-ending cycle. So we're going to start with an igneous rock. So our igneous rock is going to be represented with a crayon. So think about it. A crayon is made from liquid wax in a factory. And igneous is basically solidified liquid magma or lava when it comes out of the surface of the earth. So uh, you think about it. This is just like this. This is going to represent our solidified uh, igneous rock. So I'm going to start with igneous rock at the beginning of our rock cycle. Some examples of igneous rock that we've seen in class would be uh, granite, which is very common in New Hampshire. We've got scoria with bubbles in it. And of course, our favorite, the obsidian. This is the obsidian we looked at in class. All right, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to take our scrapers and we're going to scrape and peel off the lichens. So that's like taking the, we're going to take this off, we're going to peel off the outside, which is just like peeling off lichens. Lichens grow on rocks and they actually eat the rock. So that's a biological form of weathering the rock. So what we're going to do now, guys, is we're going to weather the rock. So this is, we're going to weather them into sediments. And we're going to do this by scraping the crayons like this. And I have a separate video of how to do this very efficiently. The best way to do it is to push it down on the table, set it on the table, and then scrape it back and forth like this very rapidly and rotate. Don't push too hard or you'll break the crayon and we'll make our sediments that way. So we're going to be weathering into sediments as this next step. You want to be careful when you do this not to, if you're using tinfoil underneath it already, don't make a hole in the tinfoil. So don't forget, weathering takes thousands of years. Weathering into sediments takes thousands of years in nature. It takes thousands of years to do this. Not something that happens quickly. And you can tell it takes a while for you to scrape down the crayon. Pretend 20,000 years have passed. Okay, so now we're going to dispose of the pebbles and keep the sand. So if you have any chunks, you, you want to get rid of that. So at this point, we've got our sediments that we've made. We've got the sediments from scraping down a rock. And you want to pile them all together on a piece of tin foil. So go ahead and do that. This is transporting. This is like transporting. So we're going to transport, just like when a rock and rocks fall off a cliff or down a river, it moves down a river, it's being transported by gravity. Right now I'm actually using gravity to do this. So gravity is going to, we're going to pile them all together. And when they pile together, we call that that position. So they're going to deposit into a pile into the fourth. So this is, this is, so I'm going to pile them into a nice pile like this. You see I've got those all piled together here. In a nice pile of my shavings. And this is like what you see at a beach. So when, when the river piles up, it makes the sand all pile up. And you can see it gets taken away here. 
and it gets deposited here where the river slows down. So it gets picked up here out of the bank by the fast moving water and it drops right here in the beach. This is where it deposits. So here we're depositing our pile of rocks, all right, our sediments. So we're picking up little pebbles, picking up sand by the fast moving water, digging away, and it's gonna deposit it at the little beach on the corner. So here's another example of where that happens. You see a river, these sandbars are created by depositing the sediments. So before we start lighting anything, you have to make sure you get rid of any of these paper. So make sure there's no paper nearby. So dispose of any paper you have, remove it from your table before you light any candles. We're gonna make this pile kind of compact. This is compacting. Remember, compacting is one of the steps in making sedimentary rock. Weather, compaction, cementation. So we're going to make this by compaction now. So everybody, compact. You can compact however you like. Compact your pile of sediments. So now I'm going to compact my rock pile. I'm just going to use a rock, which is in real life, the layers above would compact. So I'm just going to compact this with a real rock. just going to set it down on there. I'm going to let this, we're not going to use extreme pressure. Remember, we're making sedimentary rock. So this is just compacting. So I'm compacting this down. All right, just using a piece of granite. All right. So now I've compacted that. Now, you know it would be great? If you have any wax paper, that would be really, really great. All right. So I'm going to compact it some more with my hands. All right. We're going to compact it down. Now this would compact for thousands of years, guys. Thousands of years you're going to be compacting this in real life. All right, so we're going to compact it down. Now what that does is it makes it cement together. So by compacting it, you're making it cement together. So compaction cementation makes it cement together. And there's the product. These are actually products from past years students have made. And until now, we've made our sedimentary rock. So examples of sedimentary rock would be, here you have this with the fossils in it. Another sedimentary rock example is breccia. And another example we could find would be this. Remember this, guys? With the fossil in there. The only kind of rock you find with fossils are sedimentary rocks. And of course, coal. And sandstone. Mudstone. All right, and here's my little example here. So it's all compacted down, which if you compact it down, it makes it cement together. And it's the only kind of rock that will have fossils in it. All right, so make sure the edges are turned up on your tray. And now we're going to move to the next step, which is to make our sedimentary rock into metamorphic rock. So metamorphic rock is created by extreme heat and pressure. So you have an existing rock. So your sedimentary rock would be right about here. So your sedimentary rock is being moved along in subduction it's going to get pushed down in extreme heat and pressure as it subducts into the mantle. It's going to experience extreme heat and pressure. And right before it melts, it'll turn into a metamorphic rock. So remember, metamorphic rock comes from existing rock. So this is in the lithosphere sliding along. It's going to subduct down underneath the plate. And when it gets extremely under extreme heat and pressure, it will change into a new rock. For instance, this is Nice that I have. It's beautiful, shimmering rock. This would be created right about here in subduction, right before it melts. So that's the next thing we're going to create. So it's created by, you change one rock or morph one rock into another rock, and this is called extreme heat and extreme pressure. All right, to make our extreme heat, we're going to use this lighter. Very cool. We're going to light this candle. All right. And we're going to take this tray. And we're going to start warming up our sample. This is our sedimentary rock 
now undergoing extreme heat. Now we're not going to let it quite melt all the way because then we'd end up with magma. So we're just going to let this warm up until we have it semi-melted. I can see it's melting around the edges. It is starting to melt around the edges. You've got a little bit of smoke. Remember, do this with your parents. Have windows open when you're doing this. Not a bad idea to have a few fans going. So have your windows open and do this. Maybe do it in a garage or out in the carport if you have to or on a porch. All, right, all you need is a candle. So candle and tinfoil. So now we've got this starting to melt. It's actually pretty soft. All right. So again, we started with our sedimentary rock. You can still see the individual sediments. That's the thing about sedimentary rock is it does not destroy the fossils. And then we put it over our heat, which is like putting it under extreme heat. Because remember, to make a metamorphic rock, you put it under extreme heat and extreme pressure. So there you have it over extreme heat. And we're melting our sedimentary rock almost, I should say. We're almost melting. We're applying extreme heat to a rock. And in real life, over millions of years, the extreme heat would be morphing, changing one rock into another rock. So metamorphic rock always comes from another rock. And it is it, one rock is changed to another rock with extreme heat and pressure. So, for example, you could take this limestone and with an extreme heat and pressure, you can change it into marble. So it started as limestone. which is a sedimentary rock, a lot of calcium carbonate in it. And you can convert it by extreme heat and pressure into marble, which is what they make statues out of. Another beautiful rock is this gneiss, G-N-I-E-S-S, G-N-I-E-S-S, gneiss. This is high grade metamorphic. It forms at the very bottom of subduction or at the bottom of continental collision where two plates are colliding and making extreme pressure and heat and you that's where you create this beautiful piece of gneiss all right our metamorphic rock has had a lot of heat and pressure applied to it for quite a while so i do believe it's time to check it out now while our sample was uh softened I also applied pressure, like extreme pressure, with a plastic spoon. So as a result of extreme heat and pressure, we've now morphed our sedimentary rock into a metamorphic rock. You can see it's very much changed. Some of it melted, which would be actually igneous on the side, right? So now what we're going to do is we're going to take this all the way to the bottom. So this is as if... We're going to take this sample and we're going to bring this rock all the way down. We're going to take that gneiss. So we started as sedimentary rock and then we had our gneiss and we brought that and we brought the gneiss all the way down to here. And now we're going to actually let it melt all the way at the bottom of subduction and it's going to rise up in a volcano. So what we're going to do now is we're going to melt that all the way. Make sure you do not have any holes in your tin foil or it will leak. So just let that melt all the way. Let that sit in the heat and melt. So now we've got melting going on. Got our magma forming. There we go. You can see our magma. We're melting that rock. It's going all the way down in subduction. It's melting. Now this is where you want to have your windows open, folks. Let that air, let that smoke go out. If you get a little bit of smoking. If you get too much smoking, just lift it up a little bit. Let it melt all the way. All right, still got some metamorphic rock here. Tell you what, I'm going to take that metamorphic rock and move it off to the side here. And just show you what we've got. So we've got the, now we've got the igneous rock. We're going to take that off. We're going to let that cool. So we're going to let this cool a little bit. And that is basically creating our 
so we made our magma and now we're gonna like in a magma chamber and we're gonna let that cool down so if you think about it we start we finished right where we started off so we started with crayons right that were once liquid and then they got solidified in a factory and then we took it right to sedimentary we made this into sedimentary rock and then we made it into metamorphic rock and then we finished off with our igneous rock which is where we are right now so when you think about it so there's obsidian and granite remember obsidian forms by quickly cooling lava on top of the earth it's extrusive rock right this is extrusive rock which formed on top of the earth by fast cooling so there's no time for crystals to grow in here Granite, on the other hand, had plenty of time for crystals to grow because it cooled slowly under the earth, and so it had plenty of time for crystals to form. This is an intrusive igneous rock. Now, this rock cooled so fast that you can see the bubbles in it. So there was, there was gas in the lava, and the lava cooled so fast that the bubbles got trapped. Those are called vesicles, and there are no crystals. There are only vesicles, which are bubbles. And as we saw in class, one of these even floats. Now, if we were able to weigh this before and after, we would find if we did a perfect experiment and didn't lose any of the grains, and we were to weigh our sample before we started, right? And then we weighed our sample, if, we, if it was possible to do this and not lose any pieces, right? And we put it back on, we put it on our scale, we should find that they weigh exactly the same because remember, matter is never destroyed. It only changes form in a never ending cycle. So again, matter is never destroyed. It only changes form in a never ending cycle. So when you think about it, all the atoms that are in that rock are still there, even though it's gone through many, many changes. So it may have gone, it may have started as obsidian at one point, it may have been metamorphically changed into a piece of gneiss, but it always had the same atoms. The atoms are never destroyed. And don't forget our beautiful sedimentary rock. I'll leave you with this. That you can get in Portsmouth, New Hampshire. Amazing rock. So it has a sedimentary rock, which is the only kind of rock that can have fossils in it. I hope everybody had a good time doing this experiment. Remember, be safe. Bye, everyone. We'll see you in class.